So Brenda is asking, is dating a married man a sin? Brenda, that is a very good question. And I don't know if you're asking for yourself or for somebody else, or you're just curious. Um, but I will give you a very biblical answer and then I will give you some biblical advice and then I'll give you my personal advice if that's okay. I'll try to keep it quick, but um, I do want to make sure I give you the proper attention to this because this is a very serious question and it can have eternal consequences. So I do want you to know exactly what the Bible says about this. Um, as far as, you know, what is sin? For, you're asking, is it sin to, to date a married man? Um, as far as, you know, what is sin? Um, first John three, four says sin is a transgression of the law. And we know that the law of God in Exodus chapter 20, verse 14 says it, um, do not commit adultery. It is a sin to commit adultery. Now you might be saying, well, I'm just going on a date. You know, I'm not actually, you know, having sex with this person or, or whatnot, but that's, <laughs> that's still, you know, you're basically on that path. And Jesus warns us about not even, you know, going on that path you know it, jesus says you know you say not to commit adultery but do you lust after somebody in your heart then you've already committed adultery and so you really need to guard yourself whoever this is needs to guard themselves in order to prevent um those actions that lead up to the actual act because even just you know letting your mind run in that direction um which would easily happen if you're dating somebody um is you know you're definitely going in that wrong path now as far as, you know, just biblical advice, um, Jesus is something very true. I, I always try to bring up simple truths of Jesus um, that he says. And he says something I think we all know in Luke chapter 6, verse uh, 31, which is the golden rule. Do unto others as you would have them to do to you. And if you are married to somebody, whether or not you were getting along with them, would you want somebody else to come and date your spouse? Go on a date with them? Probably not. I'm married and I would be devastated if I found out my husband just went on a date with somebody else. Like it would be, my heart would be crushed. It, I would not be okay with it. So please, <laughs> it's not okay. You would not want that. I'm speaking as a married woman. I would not want somebody to do that to me. So I would probably in, in this wife's case, um, be speaking for her as well. Um, and the thing is, as far as, you know, just biblical advice as to, you know, where your you know somebody's role is when they're you know a single woman dealing with a married man um you know that you have to be very very careful because um you know we aren't supposed to be doing things that even look like sin you know avoid even the appearance of evil but the thing is to you know god says something very special about marriage and um when you look in the book of um, mark chapter 10 verses 7 through 9 i really want us to focus on this really quick um, because I think this is very important. And Mark chapter 7, uh, excuse me, chapter 10, uh, verses 7 through 9. Um, this is really key as far as, you know, should you date or not date somebody married? Um, and it says, basically talking of marriage, Jesus says, For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. So a man is only supposed to cleave to his wife. And Jesus says in verse eight, they shall become one flesh. Um, they are no more two flesh, but one flesh. And in verse nine, it says something, what therefore God has joined together, let no one put asunder. So if you are, or in the new King James version, what God has joined together, let no one separate. So if God has allowed two people to become married, it is definitely a sin, it is definitely wrong for someone to then come in and begin the separation. Even if it's just a date, even if it's just drinks or whatever, it's still causing a separation of something God has joined together in holy matrimony. It's not, it's not okay. Um, and I've had plenty of, not plenty, but I've had, you know, a girlfriend, you know, friend of mine that she was just like, you know, I really met this guy and he's so great and blah, 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 but he's married. But, you know, he seems to, you know, not really want to be married anymore. And he really likes me. And he says, you know, he can't really talk to his wife, but he can talk to me. And he, you know, you just kind of get caught up in these, or, I don't know. <laughs> I've never struggled with this. Thank God. I have the best husband in the world, but you know, she was just telling me all these things. I'm like, sweetheart, no, don't do it. Do not even think about dating this guy at all, period, ever. And um, 
that kind of brings me into my personal advice. <laughs> but one more biblical advice, though. Um, and just so you know, if, if you have any doubts, like, well, I'm not committing adultery because I'm not married or some... I, the, the sinful heart will do any make any excuse to sin. Um, and I just want you to be very, very clear that the Bible is not okay with any form of adultery, whether it's, um, you know, just premeditated or uh, whatever, you know, form it takes. Um, the Bible is something very, very clear also, again, in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. In verse, um, excuse me. Uh, nine through 11, nine and 11. So basically here, Paul is saying, you know, that don't you know that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? So if you're doing something unrighteous, like <laughs> stepping into a, an, uh, an adulterous relationship, um, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor, nor idolaters, nor adulterers. So even if you're not the person married, but you're committing adultery because you're being with somebody who is married, or you're being with somebody that you're not married to, it is sin. You will not inherit the kingdom of God. And verse 11 is your piece of hope that I hope that you would cling to, uh, whoever this is. And um, verse 11, it says, And such were some of you, but you are washed, you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the, our spirit of God. So basically, you, I, I would pray that your decision would be, hey, this is a life that is wrong. I'm going to leave it. I'm going to be washed by Jesus. And I'm going to start something new because you cannot continue in this and can call yourself righteous, period. Um, and so just as far as um, personal advice as a married woman, I would say it, this is not a good choice for a million reasons. But the biggest thing I would say to you, which, which is what I said to my friend who was um, considering dating not married you know not doing anything physical but dating somebody who was um, married which is this if he's considering dating you while he's married he's gonna date somebody else even if he says he loves you even if he promises to commit to you he does one day commit to you and leave his wife and marry you he's the kind of he's demonstrated his character that he's okay with dating somebody outside of marriage and that's not somebody you want to get involved with and give your heart to and give your time and your energy and your love to i'm sorry it's not a good choice so <laughs> that's my personal advice i pray god would lead you by his holy spirit um, to be married to God, that Jesus would be your husband until you are ready to find your true earthly husband who is not married, who is single as well, and that God will join you together in a beautiful, loving married relationship where you're not always going to be in fear of, will he be dating somebody else? You're, that's not a secure, healthy relationship. You want to be with somebody secure and healthy and who loves and fears God. So again, that's my advice to you. Uh, Jay or Wendy, I know you guys are also very happily married. So uh, if you have any other thoughts on that. I, I think he summed it up very well. and Like seriously, very well. Yeah. And I, I think the only thing, um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't really have quick words to say, you know, to add to that. I think you covered all the, all the important points to it. I, I guess that what I was thinking is something along the lines of, there are, I have seen a number of, of people get into a relationship with someone who's already in a relation, in a monogamous relationship, and they think that there is something very special to them and, you know, very special to their connection with this person and that sort of thing. But keep in mind, like, that person is not emotionally available. Even if they pretend to be a little bit, like, they're just... The, the the relationship is not a two way street, and there's, you know, they're avoiding dealing with something by having this sort of side type of relationship, and it's just like you said, it's all kinds of problems that you're going to walk into in that situation. So, um, yeah, I am, I completely agree with everything Tina said that you just you just don't even want to go there because. It's gonna. It's it's not what you think it is. No matter what it, what you're experiencing at the moment, that's not going to be the reality of it. Yeah, 
And like it kind of what you just said right now, too, reminds me of something um, that God or Paul says about Moses, um, about um, this is also in Hebrews chapter 11, that basically he'd rather um, suffer with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. And, you know, a lot of people get into these kind of relationships because they think, oh, it's fun or whatever for a season. But the end result is is just a mess. And it's, you know, shameful. It's embarrassment. It's, it's you know, and, it, and ultimately it's destruction if you, you know, yeah. if you don't repent of it. Um, it's it's not worth it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of yeah. like somebody being like, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I agree. I fully agree with everything that you're saying. It's not a good situation to get involved with and there's no good outcome to it. And, you know, I mean, even look at like we have a biblical example of of um, is it Uriah? Yeah, David and Uriah. There's da- David and Uriah, yeah. Uh, and, you know, the roles reversed a little bit here where it's, you know, a man pursuing a married woman, but no good outcome from that. It was tragic, very tragic. And that is what happens in these situations. There are tragic things that occur. If you want to be the one sowing pain and agony, that's what it's going to do. And that is not who you want to be. That's not who God's calling you to be. God is calling you to be somebody who those love and, and connection and meaning and value and that comes from a place of love and leads to more love and that kind of a dynamic is not going to do that it's it's not going to go there so yeah i just don't recommend yeah, it i agree and i, I appreciate you <laughs> definitely not and the thing is you know David's sin, it didn't just, I mean, obviously it ended in the death of his friend and it ended in the death of his illegitimate child, but it also affected him as a parent. Um, You know, he was ineffective as a parent. His children, a lot of them are lost. They won't be saved because of his poor example. And it affected his children for generations. It affected, you know, it doesn't just affect you and the other person. It affects children. It affects other people you know, many other people yeah. and you really have to think of the consequences of, you know, of, you know, That's, just not being a selfish yeah. person and thinking of the feelings of, of others. And, yeah. and even if you look at some of the situations in the Bible where the man had more than one wife, there were situations, I mean, these were not in here to set an example of what to do. These were in here to, to help us see the results of what happens even in those situations, there ends up being conflict and jealousy and anger and bitterness and all kinds of things. And, and I, I know there's people that teach how to have, you know, relationships that are more forgiving and gentle and like dealing with your jealousy in these kinds of situations and stuff like that. But like, it's, it's not bringing any party to the point to the to the level of love and connection and wholeness that God is wanting everyone to have. So do, do these things happen? Yes, but is it is it God's best for people? No. That's not his plan. When you have a a, a connection between you know, a godly connection between a husband and a wife, and they are fully devoted to each other, and there is nobody else involved in that picture. And it is just their connection with each other in, you know, that sense. It is a powerful, powerful thing. It is so healing to the heart and soul of both parties in it. And it and it's it's such a beautiful thing. And that's what God wants for everybody. And that, you know, I, I've never seen that in in a relationship that has more people involved in it. Absolutely. 